Today I'm going to show you how to make this reversible cowl in Tunisian crochet. It's called the Waterfalls pad sorry, the Waterfalls cowl. I hope you like it. It's pretty easy and um, it's very lacy and lightweight, made with ferrous wheel yarn from Lion Brand. Before we begin, I want to show you that it's also reversible. This is what would be technically called the right side. You can wear it um, with this triangle in the back or on the side or in the front in the center. Um, and you can also wear it reversed because it has this really cool look that looks like purled stitches. So we have these beautiful drop stitches and if you wear it on the reverse side, it almost looks like it's um, a knitted object made with, with the purl stitch. So let's take a look at what we need to make this project. Okay, so for this project, we're going to need the usual suspects, some yarn. I'm using a worsted weight yarn called Ferris Wheel by Lion Brand. This particular color is called Buttercup. And this was also, the, the cowl itself was made also in Ferris Wheel in the colorway Cotton Candy. You'll also need a measuring tape, a yarn needle, a Tunisian crochet hook. Although if you haven't received your, ordered your hooks yet, you can probably use a regular one and just attach a rubber band to the end as this um, doesn't have too many stitches. We have 30 stitches will probably fit on your hook. It might be a little tight, but it should work. And of course, a scissors. The size hook that I'm using is an eight millimeter. And the reason for that is to give this cowl a nice lacy effect. I'm using a Tunisian crochet hook from a Denise set, and I will have a link for this in the pattern, in the descript also in the video description below, and over on my blog post. So to get started, we're going to make a slip knot. This is your tail. This is your working yarn. Loop the working yarn on top of your tail, then pull your working yarn up through that loop. Put it on your hook, and you have a slip knot. We're going to chain, sorry, we're going to chain 30 stitches. And with all Tunisian crochet projects, and especially this one, since it's a lacy project, you want to stitch on the looser side. So to make a chain, you yarn over, pull the yarn through the loop on your hook, and you've got one chain made. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through that loop, and we have three chains. So just continue in this way until you have 30 chains. Um, if you would like, you can make your cowl The 30 chains is the length from the top to the bottom. Um, this is 10, 10 inches, sorry, 10 inches high. So if you wanted yours to be shorter or even longer, you can change the number of stitches, the number of chains that you make. Just make sure that they are a multiple of three. So we're going to do 30. I'll meet you back here. Okay, so now I've just done 12. It's a multiple of three because I'm just going to show you a small version. I'm just going to make a miniature version. The next step is we are going to skip the first chain and we're going to go into the back bump of the second chain. On the front of our chains we have the V's and on the back of the chains we have the back bumps. We're going to go into the second one. The 
and we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. And you're going to do that in each of the back bumps for all of your chains. When you are done, you will have the same number of loops on your hook as the number of chains that you started with. So if you're following the pattern exactly, you will have 30 loops on your hook and you can, you can count them. Since I started with 12 chains, I should have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I must have skipped one. <laughs> okay, I did. I skipped one. Okay, so now I have 12 loops on the hook. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And now we're going to do a regular or normal return pass, which is a yarn over, pull through one. That creates our edge stitch. And then yarn over, pull through two, all the way back. And this is our foundation row. Okay, the next row that we're going to do is our drop stitch row. And for this, you're going to start by chaining two. And then we are going to Tunisian simple stitch in the second vertical bar. And then we do a yarn over. We repeat that all the way across. Tunisian simple stitch, yarn over, Tunisian simple stitch, yarn over, and remember the Tunisian simple stitch is going under that vertical bar, yarning over, and pull up a loop. We do a yarn over, and we're just going to do this all the way to the end. And now we're at our, we did our last yarn over, now we're at our edge stitch, and we'll just review that. The edge stitch has three threads, the one in the back, the one that goes on top of that, and this inside one right here. And for the edge stitch, we're going to go on top of the inside thread and under the two outer threads, yarn over, and pull up that last loop. Now, since this is a drop stitch row, we're going to have a slightly different return pass. We're, what we're going to do, well, it's actually pretty different. We're going to chain two. One, two. That's going to give us the height that we need for our elongated stitches. Now, what we're going to do is with each of these yarn overs, we're going to drop them off our hook. But in order to do that, we need to first remove the yarn that's on our hook and then drop that yarn over. Replace the loop back on your hook and then you do a yarn over pull through two. So let's do that again. What I like to do is I like to kind of pinch it right here so that, because um, eventually this is all going to kind of elongate, but while you're doing it, it this is a little easier. So I just turn my hook, I come down through that one and this one, and I go back up through my loop, yarn over, pull through two. And I pinch it again here. You don't have to pinch it too hard. I'm going to drop that loop. I'm going to drop the yarn over, go back through the loop, yarn over and pull through two. So it's like a 
it's like a regular return pass, but we had the the two the chain two at the beginning, and then with each before we do our yarn over pull through two on all the remaining stitches, we have to drop our yarn over first. Drop that loop, drop the yarn over, back into the loop, yarn over, pull through two. Drop the loop, drop the yarn over, back through the loop, yarn over, pull through two. Drop the loop, drop the yarn over, back through the loop, yarn over, pull through two. And I keep moving these fingers up with each stitch. Drop the loop, drop the yarn over, Pick up the loop again, yarn over, pull through two. Drop the loop, drop the yarn over, and pull through two. And I'll just show you here, as you're doing this, be aware of your yarn overs because <clears throat> sometimes you may have forgotten to do a yarn over. And if that's the case, then just do the yarn over pull through two and you will most likely have enough uh, yarn for those loops to be okay. If, if not, you might have to go back and redo it. So drop that one, yarn over pull through two. And then for the last one, it's just yarn over pull through two. And then what you can do is just kind of Pull those up, and now you have these really nice elongated drop stitch. So that's the drop stitch row. Okay, so then the second row is a Tunisian simple stitch, but we're going to be working into the back bump of our return pass chain. So like our starting chain, the side has the V's and on the back of the chain we have these back bumps. And there's a back bump that corresponds with each of the vertical bars. So for this Tunisian simple stitch we're not going to be going into the vertical bars we're going to go into the back bump that corresponds with each of those vertical bars. So we're going to go into this first one. Just going to tighten, not tighten, just keep it from being too loose, that stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Go into the next back bump yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, keep your stitches nice and loose. Okay, we're at second to last stitch. Now we're at the at our edge stitch and if you recall we we did a chain two, one, two. So for this outer edge, for this outer edge stitch we're going to go into the top chain. So we've got our two outer threads. We're going to go underneath those. Yarn over and pull up a loop. And now the return pass is just a normal return pass. Yarn over, pull through one. And then yarn over, pull through two. All the way back. Okay, so now you're going to do those two rows until your piece, um, let's see how many I did. I did 
how many sets? I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. I did twenty repeats of those two rows. So you can do that amount or you can you can make it wider or you can make it more narrow. It is the circumference at the top is it's very lacy, so it's kind of loose. So it's, it's 13 inches across, which means it's 26 inches around. And at the bottom, it's about 17 inches wide. So about 34 inches around at the bottom. And again, it was 10 inches high. So, so you're going to continue with your piece until it measures about um, 26 inches or 20, 20 repeats of these. And like I said, you can make it uh, narrower or wider if you choose. I'm going to do a few more repeats and then I'm going to show you how we do the, the triangle. Okay, so you'll want to end on a Tunisian simple stitch row that you did in the back bumps. And now we're going to begin the triangle. And this is going to be done with Tunisian short rows. And if you've never done them before, don't be afraid. They're not hard at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to work the short rows in sets of three. So our first short row is going to be three stitches. The loop on our hook counts as the first one. Two, three. And for our short rows, the return pass is going to be yarn over, pull through two all the way to the end. Okay, so we skip doing an edge stitch. We just do yarn over, pull through two for all. So now for our next short row, we're going to go into, this is our first one, this is one, two, and then we're going to go back into the same stitch that we did for this third one. So this will be number three, and then we're going to do three more. One, two, three. And we're going to do that short row return pass. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two, all the way back. So then we just repeat that again. We're going to go into Tunisian simple stitch into each of the simple stitches. When we get to this end one, we're going to go into the stitch of the row before. We're going to re-go into that one. And now we're going to do three more stitches. One, two, three. And we do our short row return pass. Yarn over, pull through two, two, two all the way back. We're going to do that again. Go into all the Tunisian simple stitches. And then we go into the one from the previous row. And then three more will bring us to the end. One, two, and three. Of course, yours is going to take longer because yours is going to be more stitches than, than mine was. So for this one, we're going to do a normal return pass. Yarn over, pull through one. We're going to make an edge stitch there. Yarn over, pull through two. 
all the way back. And now we're ready to do the other half of the triangle. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do that same thing, but in the opposite, in the reverse order. So our next row is going to bring us all the way to um, here. So we're going to go backwards three stitches. One, two, three. And so we'll come, come to this stitch here. Okay, so we're at that fourth stitch from the end, leaving three stitches undone. We'll come back to those later, you'll see. Now we do our short row, return pass, yarn over, pull through two, all the way to the end. And if you can guess, we're going to do the same thing again, so we're going to do three less than this row so we're going to count backwards one two three so we're going to go all the way to this stitch and you can also count it forward too by it'll always be a multiple of three so we've got one two three four five six seven. Okay, that was too many. <laughs> Six. So that's how, that's one way you can know if you've gone too far. If it's not a multiple of six, sorry, a multiple of three, you're at the wrong number. So short row return pass, yarn over, pull through, two all the way back. All right, and our last short row is just going to be three. So one, two, three, short row return pass, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And now we're going to do a full row like we did before. Going into each Tunisian stitch that we've made and when we come to the ones that where, where they were um, combined together we're going to go into the stitch in the, the previous row. So it's always in multiples of three. One, two, and then three is in the previous row. And then one, two, third one is in the previous row. One, Two, and this is our edge stitch. Go into those two outer threads, yarn over, pull up a loop, and we're going to do a regular return pass. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two all the way back. Okay, so we're almost there. We're ready for the bind off now. Okay, before we begin the row before the bind off, I just want to point out to you about the, the triangle part. So in our example, we did um, series of threes. We did these short rows where we increased by three on each of those short rows. And this is an example on this one. I used that same three, three, three short rows. So we did, we started with, out with three, six, nine, 12, and so on, all the way up to uh, the length of this one, which I think was um, 39 stitches. And you can see that 
this triangle is a little bit narrow, at least it's narrow compared to this version. And the reason is on this version, I started out with three and I just increased one with each short row. So it's the same, and the reason why I did that is because this only had 21 stitches. So it's, um, it's not that much shorter, it's a little bit shorter than this one, but it was a thicker yarn and I had it, I just decided to make it less high. Um, but when I was doing the three, 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 you know, the three, six, nine, my triangle was turning out to be much more narrow than I wanted it to be. So you have that option. You can, you can, I probably recommend starting off with three and then you can either do um, increases by twos or increases by ones. The smaller your increases, the wider your triangle the wider your triangle will be. So um, I just wanted to make a note of that, that you, you do have that option. If you're using a thicker yarn and you have less stitches than I did in, than say with a worsted weight yarn where I did 39 stitches, um, you can make your triangle wider by having your increases be by smaller amounts. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on, all the way up to, in this case, 21. So um, that's an option for you. And if you do decide to do um, something other than the short rows of three, six, nine, 12, 15, and so on, um, you can just you know, you can start out and you can see how it's going. You can try it in, in series of threes or series of twos or just increases of one. And um, if you don't like how it's shaping up, just pull it out and start over again with a different, different way. So it's kind of customizable. It's um, up to you, the kind of look you want, whether you want a wide triangle or whether you want a more narrow tri triangle. Okay, so the next step from here before we actually connect to the other side is we're going to do another row of extended stitches. So again, we chain two and do our simple stitch with the yarn over after each simple stitch. Okay, and yarn over, go into our edge stitch, chain one, and then yarn over, pull through one, and we're going to drop our yarn, drop our yarn overs, and do our, our yarn over, pull through two on each of these, go all the way back to the end. And then just yarn over, pull through two on the last one. And now we are ready to connect to the other side. All right, so in connecting to the other side, what we're going to do is we're going to, this is our, um, traditionally our right side, the right side of our work. We're going to take the end of our work and pull it up towards where we're working. So we have our starting chain here. And what I like to do is just to make sure I have this, the right, I get right into the right stitches. I, I'm going to count. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12 stitches, and over here we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
9, 10, 11, 12. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this first stitch. So this is this is our this was our starting chain and these are the V's of our starting chain. I'm going to go under the V of the very first one. I'm going to take the loop from our other side and I'm just going to pull that through. And just get it back to the right size on the hook. And I'm going to do a bind off that connects the two sides. And at this point I'm going to take my end off so it doesn't get in the way. So what would for each each stitch of the bind off we're going to first go into one of the chains, one of our starting chains, and then we're going to go into the back bump of the next stitch, yarn over, pull a loop through all of that, and then pull that loop through the loop that's on the hook. So let's show you that again. We're going to go into the next V of our starting chain. We're going to go into the next back bump. See this is our horizontal chain. We're going to go into the next back bump of that horizontal chain. Yarn over and pull a loop through all of that. And then we pull that loop through the loop on our hook. One more time. Go into the next V of the starting chain. Go into the back bump. <coughs> of our current work. Yarn over, pull through a loop, and then pull that through the loop on your hook. And we'll just continue with this all the way down to the end. Okay, we just have a few more here. Last one, and we'll go into our edge stitch. If the stitches don't match up exactly, you can just kind of sometimes you might have to just fudge it a little bit, and that's okay. And then we pull through one last time, and we will cut our yarn. and then pull through the yarn and pull that tight. So now when we turn it inside out, we have this nice look. And we have symmetry on both sides with the of the triangle just like we have here. And just like we have here as well. So, so the last step of course is to sew in our ends. Just turn it inside out and thread your yarn needle And just um, sew it in and out of these
and just cut that. Sometimes I just pull it a little tight and then cut it. And then I pull that and it gets hidden on the inside. So, if you liked this video, please like it, please share it, and please subscribe for more tutorials and good stuff coming up soon. And if you're interested in more simple Tunisian crochet projects, check out my micro project and my mini project and all the other ones that I have. Um, and lastly, if you are interested in learning even more, learning some really exciting Tunisian lace, um, check out my online course, which I'll have a link to in the description below, on how to make the Land of the Fairies shawl, which I will have some pictures at the end of this video. Thanks for watching.